one scientific discipline to which conservation science has a particularly close relation is taxonomy, a discipline engaged in the discovery, description, and classification of biodiversity which needs to be managed and conserved for future generations. Researchers have widely agreed that our taxonomic inventory is highly incomplete, with only about 10% or at best about 15 to 20 percent of species having been collected, studied, and named by biologists, more than 80 percent of extant species on our planet are yet to be described. Freshwater ecosystems are least studied and highly threatened compared to marine and terrestrial ecosystems, and many more species are yet to be described from this highly diverse realm. I don't remember the exact day, but probably it was the end of May of 2012. I was fishing in the Muatapua River in God's own country, but particularly on that day we could not find much fish downstream of the river, so we decided to move further upstream. The water level in the river was quite high because of the pre monsoon rain that lasted for almost a week. We chose a quiet river bank somewhere near the temple where my friend Phoebin cast her net. To my surprise, we got a fair bunch of fish in the first catch itself, but something that particularly interested me was the several filament barbs in the catch. When I started photographing this fish in my tank, I realized that there are three different species of filament barbs of the genus Daukensia. Getting more than one species of the same genus in the same shoal was very surprising to me, as until then we did not realize the presence of syntopic fish species in the Western Guards. Later I tried my best to identify those species, although nothing seems to match correctly with what I had observed with available taxonomic literature. Well, that was the moment which triggered my interest in studying this beautiful, charming, yet least studied group of cyprinids from the Western Guards. Dr. Ralph Briggs, one of the world's leading freshwater ichthyologists based at the Senckenberg Museum in Dresden in Germany and our longtime collaborator was the first to stumble upon the Apsara Bab. When I went into the field with my Indian colleagues in 2012, then um, Nikhil Su from Bangalore, who accompanied us, wanted to show me this beautiful Asimilis type from the Sita River. And when he got his cast net out and cast it a couple of times and pulled it out, we had this really beautiful, very, very colorful, amazing looking Asimilis in the net. And my first reaction was that this couldn't be the same as the drab looking Asimilis that we collected in other parts. And so when Unmesh started his revision, I pointed out to him that he should specifically look at this very different looking Asimilis from the Sita. And um, when he started studying it, he agreed with me that this is a species, a new species, different from the actual drab looking Asimilis. During this pandemic, our team has an exciting moment to share with you as our second paper studying the filament barbs has been published today in the Vertebrate Zoology, a scientific journal published by the Senckenberg's Museum of Zoology in Germany. The first paper in the series was published in May, almost five months ago in the same journal, and this whole combined study is an interesting scientific contribution to the freshwater biodiversity of the Western Ghats. Well, I am particularly happy at this moment because it is a major part of my ongoing PhD thesis which I am undertaking at the Kerala University of Fisheries and Ocean Studies. Both this paper talk about our exciting journey to unravel unknown diversity of these small, beautiful freshwater fishes of genus Daukensia. 
Pyramid barbs are popular as aquarium fishes owing to their strikingly beautiful coloration, but they also contribute quite heavily to the local fishery in many regions of the Western Ghats. This put group of fish are called filament barbs for a very specific reason. In the breeding period, mature males of this group of fish they develop elongated extensions of the dorsal fin rays, and so the name filament barbs. What started as a small project in early 2012 went on to become a multi-institutional collaboration comprising of as many as 37 expeditions to over 75 sampling locations including collection of voucher specimens and generating more than 250 DNA sequences from throughout the Western Ghats. The final result is description of four new species of filament barbs including what could be one of the most stunning fish of the Western Ghats, the Apsara barb. As a hobbyist turned taxonomist, my passion doesn't end with just describing the species. But I try to maintain them in aquaria to observe their behavior and maybe even breed them. As you can see behind me, I have a small breeding population of Dokensia rohani and Dokensia apsara, which I was able to spawn this year. And I have hundreds of juveniles in this time right here. You may know that many of these species are going extinct even before they are discovered. As a taxonomist, I am happy I was able to collaborate with Unmesh to bring these three beautiful species to the knowledge of science. As a hobbyist, I am happy that I have been able to play a role in returning these species back to the wild in case they go extinct in future. We described one of the new species as Apsara. The word derived from Sanskrit referring to the Apsaras, the celestial names, the most beautiful fairy women from heaven which are very popular in Hindu mythology. The second species was described from rivers in Kerala and named as Daukensia Australis, referring the Latin for south, the distribution range of the species that is southern Kerala. The Australis bark is the southernmost element of the Assimilis complex, an iconic species endemic to rivers of southern Kerala. I have been surveying the rivers of Kerala for the last three years as part of my PhD. And the discovery of the unique lineage within Dokensia from the Sarakudi and Muatukuda rivers and two of the most extensively surveyed river systems was surprising and shows that there is much more diversity in this water than we have ever imagined. We described the third new species from west flowing Netravati river of Karnataka from the central parts of the western Ghats and named it as Daukensia Krasa as it has a rounded appearance unlike any other filament barbs. The fourth new species, Daukensia Uttara, was described from west flowing Kazi river of Maharashtra from the Ratnagiri district. This northern filament barb differs from its uh, sister species, Daukensia filamentosa, by having uniquely placed caudal fin bands and very distinct mouth structure. As we are progressing wisely using a systematic and integrative taxonomic approach, we are improving our understanding of how complex the diversity of this group of fish is. Our study highlights the need of further explorations, field surveys and detailed examination of vouchers at various museums in India and around the world as this will no doubt lead to description of even more species of filament barbs and other related species in near future. This is possible only with the help of and involvement of a large number of people including both scientists, hobbyists and the common public. For example, it was an ardent fish hobbyist and our friend uh, Nikhil Sud from India Gills Bangalore who helped us to secure the most important specimens when it mattered the most. I think the first time I collaborated with Rajiv, Unmesh, Ralph, uh, all these guys were over the discovery of the first Dario from South India, uh, Dario Europe's, which is uh, almost eight to nine years back. And since then, I have collaborated with them and provided them samples of maybe 10 to 12 different species of fish, a few of which are under description even now. And uh, I have always found them to be very professional, very genuine and very approachable people. 
I would just say that being hobbyists, being traders and being citizen scientists and being citizens of this country, it is important that we all go out and start exploring the surroundings around us, the rivers, the streams around us, because the rate at which expansion happens, the way uh, development is happening and our population is exploding, there are a lot of species that will go extinct before they are found. So we can be that extra pair of hands for these scientists who are doing a commendable job. And you know, you always, whenever you go out and explore, it always ends up being a fun trip. Uh, irrespective of whether you find a new species or you document species that have already been found there. Another thing I would say is there is a worrying trend that seems to have come up uh, over the last maybe a year, year and a half, where there are hobbyists and uh, citizen scientists, if I may call them, who are going out into the wild trying to explore. Uh, but their main idea seems to be to get a fish named after themselves. You know, I have discovered almost 12 new species of fish till today in the last eight, nine years. I have never had the thought process or the intention to have anything named after me. It should be done with an idea of exploring what's around you. And if you do end up with a new species, it would be great if you gave it to the scientists and they could give it an actual name, you know, a scientific name, a Latin name, uh, or as in this case, Apsara, Indian name. Our efforts to explore, catalogue and describe the unknown fish species from the Western Ghats does not end with Daukensia. We continue to explore streams and rivers of Western Ghats, examine the historic collections in museums both in India and abroad and apply the state-of-the-art molecular tools and techniques to make sure every fish species in the Western Ghats is named and conserved. Scientists are literally racing against time, not only to prevent extinction, but also to discover new species and to generate knowledge on existing species. The discoveries of unknown species from the Western Ghats, such as the least known filament barbs, highlights the potential of this biodiversity hotspot to uncover many species which are yet unknown to science.